These are the remains of what was once a beautiful city. But the mind of man is as rich in evil as it is in good. And the same inventiveness which blessed us with insulin, electricity, the arts and engineering miracles of all sorts, has also cursed us with the sword, the gun, the bomb, and... Skateboarding is so sick. What the? It's the only extreme sport that matters. It's also a great natural selection tool of keeping retards in Orange County from reproducing. Oh, shit. Skating had been popular for a couple decades, but didn't end up transforming into a real sport until the X Games in 95. It turned these really skilled guys who probably weren't making much more than a decent living into millionaire celebrities. They made t-shirts and little toy skateboards you could use with your fingers. Cartoon characters started riding skateboards. Sonic did it. Marty McFly did it. And sales of skateboards were off the fucking charts. And you know what else sales were off the fucking charts? Video games. There were a couple skating games made like Skate or Die in the 80s. But with these new consoles being capable of rendering 3D, a skateboarding game could make a lot of money, I mean have a lot of opportunity for fun gameplay. And with it becoming this super popular sport that shared basically the same demographic of video games, there was really no better time to make one. Skating in a game is a lot better than real life also, cause you don't have to worry about this shit happening. Activision picked up the idea of a 3D skateboarding game and made Neversoft develop it. Well, that seems like it's gonna be cool, but no. You see, this is gonna be a sports game, and to make a good sports game, you need the name of a celebrity on it. Somebody you can really trust. Here's some examples. The problem is that skateboarding doesn't have a huge league associated with it either, like FIFA, or the NHL, or the NBA, or the NRA. So the name was probably gonna be something stupid. Like Street Skater 2. And they were gonna use an 8 in the title to seem all cool and shit. Oh, what the fuck? This is real? But don't worry. Never saw contact to this guy called Tony Hawk. He spun around a couple times and made a million dollars. He was also a pretty clean cut guy who could work as a role model. So he'd be perfect on the cover. He was chill with doing it, and Activision would send him demos of the game so he could make angry phone calls about it not having enough Goldfinger. Pro Skater made a shit ton of money, spawning a series that would become almost as big as Tony Hawk's fucking forehead. The next two sequels made almost just as much, but then the fourth game happened. Oops! Looks like you guys dropped all that money you were supposed to make. You know what that means, right? It's time for a soft reboot. They changed the subtitle to Underground for the fifth game, which you might think is because they were trying to breathe some new life into the franchise and really open it up by starting with a fresh slate and a new title. But you see, that's completely wrong. The real reason is that 5 is the cutoff point in sequels where no one takes you seriously anymore. Like, Rocky V is just a funny title to me. How did these geniuses manage to make five movies about a dumb guy who punches people? Check it, man. Muska is actually coming to this dump for a skate demo. Get dressed, let's go. Hey, wait, I get to create my character? I've never gotten to do this before in the games I've reviewed. I'll just make him look like me. Well, I just got my ride all set up. Every Tony Hawk game always introduces a new move or two to follow up on combos easier. Pro Skater 2 started it with adding the manual, which would let you continue any move that wasn't done on a vert. Then in 3, they realized not being able to continue off a vert trick was stupid, because it just discouraged you from wanting to go in a half pipe, which is kind of retarded in a skateboarding game. So they added the revert. These two moves pretty much opened up opportunity for fucking insane combos that could go on theoretically forever. So with Underground, they decided that the only innovation needed to the series was not being on your board at all. Holy shit! The game introduces this to you right away, and I think it's great. It doesn't disrespect the fans of the series by teaching you how to fucking ollie or whatever. It quickly shows the new shit they added, and they managed to teach it to you in under two minutes. While I do like being able to get off my board, and I do appreciate the wiggle room it gives me, it's kind of like a get out of jail for get out of federal prison after selling some narcotics card. Whenever I'm in a situation like this where I should break a couple bones, or like my fucking teeth, I can just get off my board and go, Nah, I can't do it. You do get a limited amount of time that you can do it in a combo, but it still heavily inflates the amount of points you can get. The character control is kind of awkward off his board also. For some reason, my guy fucking bolts in whatever direction you put him in when walking. Momentum just doesn't exist. He's either standing in place or sprinting. Also, I can double jump like fucking Super Mario. Hey, by the way, this game actually has a story that's worth talking about. We're a young amateur skater trying to make a name in a ghetto town in New Jersey. We mainly just like to skate for fun with our friend Eric. 
Let's go skate. But there's this guy coming called Chad Muska, who desperately wants more friends of the urban variety. Check this out. We're planning on using him to get a leg up. Wow, Muska in Jersey? Unreal. Why do you idiots act like someone coming to New Jersey is insane? You live in New Jersey, not fucking Arkansas or something. Anyways, we do some tricks to get his attention. And while he doesn't suck my dick, he gives me some advice, telling me to get hooked up. Why don't you head down to your shop, check out their riders, and try to get hooked up? I need sponsors out of my way! It looks like we're in a bit of trouble, though. Some drug dealers have taken shit from the shop we want to get sponsored by. And in an act of bravery, I guess, we decide to get it back. Wait, kid! It's too dangerous! Hopefully not as dangerous as this fucking camera. Our friend Eric, for whatever reason, decides that being aggressive with drug dealers is a good idea and commits arson. <laughs> After showing our loyalty and getting their gear back from drug dealers, you think we get sponsored by the shop right away, but no. The owner, Stacy Peralta, wants us to make a skate video, and he doesn't want us doing it in New Jersey. And please don't hand me anything from the same old spots in New Jersey, dude, because I've seen it all. Okay, I guess we should let Eric know. Dude, I just talked to Stacy Peralta. They know. Th those gangsters know it was me. When I got back to my house last night, they were parked outside waiting- Eric, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to tell you about how I met Spacey Peralta. Turns out that screaming and laughing like an idiot after lighting someone's car on fire might make it easy for them to figure out that you fucking did it. The situation is now dire and we have to get to New York as soon as possible before these guys give us a wet willy. The problem is that we can't get to the train station to leave because the bridge is blocked by some police cars. The way we get around this is by using a macro machine to propel us over the bridge. Now after that insane adventure, we should be all ready to get on that train. But this police officer won't let us because he thinks we're punks. What's your problem, bacon bits? Wake up on the wrong side of your mother this morning? Yeah! Oh fuck. With no more cops, we should be able to go now. But Eric gets captured and we have to chase the dealers in a fucking car? Apparently Neversoft not only thought the best addition to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater's skateboarder would be not being on a fucking skateboard, but they actually thought, yeah, let's add cars. You know, kind of like the addition of MMA fights in Tiger Woods Pro Tour 01. <laughs> After making sure we didn't fuck up Eric, we're now off to New York. Thug transitions into different environments very naturally through the storyline. It's a nice update to the basic way Pro Skater did level transitions, where he chose the next level after doing some objectives. There's nothing wrong with that style, and in some contexts, I actually think it works better. But this is where having a story in a game can actually be beneficial. It helps immerse you into the world a bit better, even if it's really stupid. Get special on this QP and do a QP moonwalk special 5 0. I think games run into a problem where they try having these huge, self indulgent storylines that instead of enhancing the experience, just get in the way of it. Thug doesn't do that. Its story is shallow, but it's used to progress the gameplay, unlike other games where it's vice versa. When you get to Manhattan, you realize this game has a lot of roads in it, and there's really nothing you can do in these because they have to accommodate for cars. I don't think they did this because everyone is super fucking excited to skitch cars or whatever. You can't do a skitch during a combo, and it's just a lame trick overall. They were mainly put in there again for immersion. You have to admit that seeing all the cars and pedestrians makes the game feel a lot more lively and actually feels like you're in a city and not in a skateboard level that looks like a city. I'm pretty sure skitching was put in afterwards just so you could have something to do with the cars besides grind on them. This fucking game's awesome. Hey, remember how Peralta wanted us to make a video that didn't have any New Jersey? And please don't hand me anything from the same old spots in New Jersey, dude. Well, now we can do that, but we need someone else to record it since we don't have a video camera. We find some, but they're a little hostile at first. That's fine, though. In this game, all you have to do to get people like you is do an ollie. Oh jeez, I have to drive another car? Eric now has two interstate cases of arson and has vandalized a public transportation vehicle. But at least we get a cool skate video out of it. It was so good it even got a sponsor. Wow, you got style. You are on the team, dude. You're definitely on the team. Fuck yeah, dude, let's go to the DQ. Oh, fuck. Now we get to go to all kinds of contests and make money. But first we have to do some favors so we can get a ride to Florida. Man, damn kids. 
I was supposed to have some new decks delivered to the sponsors by the start of the show, but some punk stole them. You can get them back in time. It'd really save our ass. Anything for you, Bill Burr. My leg. Anyways, now we're in Florida, getting beat up by a police officer for having a McCarthy bumper sticker. Eric, of course, wants revenge like he always does, but instead of setting Disney World on fire, he convinces us to fuck up Jeb Bush's campaign signs. Let's make sure he doesn't win. Grind down the Jet signs. Why would I want to do that? Let Jeb have his signs, Eric. It's not like he has anything else. After our run-in with the law, we can finally enter our first skating contest. Parts closed to the public. Uh, now check the list. Eric Sparrow, a.k.a. the guy who's gonna win best trick tomorrow. A.k.a. cocky knucklehead. Okay, you're in. Whoa, easy there, Chief. The list's all checked off. What? You signed us both up, right? Well, uh, <laughs> look, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about this, uh, but anyway, I, I, I gotta go skate. I mean, this could be my big break. And who knows, maybe you could uh, impress a pro or something and get in too. Maybe I could fuck your shit up. Well, time to suck up to some pro skaters so we can get into the contest, which is surprisingly easy to do considering how dumb some of these guys are. All right, let's go skate some spots around Tampa. Let's see if you can beat my combos while you're at it. Will I get some of your weed after if I do it? Welcome to Wet Beaver's Party Beaver Boat. Boring as hell. Let's liven it up with some skating. This party's boring. Wow, we're really crashing this party. <laughs> hey, that's Tony Hawk over there. No, it can't be. Hey, you skate pretty well. Let's see if you can hang with me. Holy shit. It's Tony Hawk. Guys. We beat the game. Not really, though, because we still have to fuck Eric in the mouth, which Tony Hawk helps us to do by getting us into the contest. Can't make any guarantees, but I'll talk to the guys at the contest. The contests are back in this game from Pro Skater, but I'm not as much of a fan. In the originals, you had a lot of room for freedom and creativity with how you could rack up a huge score. But here, if you leave the 20 square foot area you're allowed to compete in, you lose all your points. Like, look at this. There's a whole area up here I want to skate in, but I'm not allowed to. Now the reason is because that area has a pool where I can do vert tricks, and this challenge is a street competition, which is great, but after finishing this one, I then have to do a vert contest. Metal the vert competition. Make sure you stay in the competition area. Why? Hey guys, how about you just take these two areas and these two challenges and fucking put them together and let me do all the cool shit I want to do. The problem with splitting these two up is that during the street sections, all I'm doing is pacing from one side of the room to the other, and with the vert challenges, I'm stuck skating in one quarter pipe doing the same couple moves. It's boring and restrictive. They only last around a minute, but they end up feeling like five. Now, I know I can do lip tricks here too, but they're fucking dumb. There's even an area later at this huge stadium, and it's super fun to skate around in. But guess what I have to do in it? Be an asshole in a quarter pipe for two minutes. Why do it like this? Just copy what you did in Pro Skater. There's literally no reason you couldn't have done it like that. After our performance, we get to choose a company to show for, so let's take a look. Wow, really? That guy just did an ollie. He didn't even get any points. This is the standards you've set for yourselves? Birdhouse? More like turd house. Skating in Philly is so much better than skating anywhere else. Um, people always ask me like... I really don't appreciate that alarm clock. It reminds me of getting up for work. I fucking hate work. Or anything that isn't skateboarding. <laughs> Holy shit, will signing up for you make me ollie that far? Well, it didn't affect my jumping height, but it did make me all ready for St. Patty's Day, so I'll take it. It would have been very easy to just implement status conditions on the menu like sponsored or pro and have been done with it. But they actually put the effort into making it sponsored actually seem cool. You get exclusive boards and shirts, and when you become pro later in the game, you even get to make your own skateboard design, which actually has a pretty decent variety of options. At this point in the game, skating around becomes a whole lot more fun too, thanks to having more special tricks and sat upgrades which let you jump higher, manual longer, and knock down pedestrians easier. Oh. 
The way you get stat points in this game is amazing. You get better when you do things like manual for a certain amount of seconds or getting a huge combo. It adds to the progression of the game. When you finally become a pro, your character is capable of a lot more than when you first started off in New Jersey. It works so much better than the pro skater games where stat upgrades come from collecting these dumb coins throughout the stage. Here it doesn't get in the way of anything. It actually makes sense in a real life context also, which is crazy in a game where you can do this. Hey, it turns out that when you skate around a lot and you practice stuff, you get better at it. The team demo! Come on, I want you to get the new guy hooked up. Sup, fool? Oh, what the fuck are you still doing here? Now, after that stunt Eric pulled in Florida, you think our guy here would feed him to a crocodile and maybe film it for his next skate video, but instead he just looks at him funny. Fucking smash his head on that fountain. Make him really fucking feel it, too. I hate these missions where I have to skate around looking for bullshit. It just doesn't work well in this game's context. The reason it's alright in Pro Skater is because they serve a purpose of getting you to explore the whole map. So you don't just find one little area, get your points, and then jerk off to the next level. It's the reason everyone knows these stages by heart, and it also creates a great system of multitasking. But here it's very sterile. I just ride around playing hide-and-seek because some rad guy told me to. Whoa, what a party, huh? I'm having to explore the level anyways to find missions to do, so these just serve no purpose. They're just in here because they were in the other games. Man, those sketches are awesome. Did you draw them? Nah, some artists did. They're the graphics for my new pro model. Hawaii is probably my favorite map in the game, mainly because it has palm trees and a beach. It also just has a lot of variety in its scenery. I enjoy a lot of the missions here too. Well, except this one where I have to drive again. I'm getting sick of these. Let's see a Smash 5 pineapple stand. Smash 5? God, that's gonna be horrible. The rule set's gonna be one stock and everyone's gonna be playing as like Kirby's nephew or something. I feel the need to talk about the soundtrack also as it's a pretty big deal in the Tony Hawk series. It seems like at this point Ska is completely off the playlist and that kind of upsets me. Now I know this is probably like the only time anyone's ever felt emotions about Ska music, but it does fit really well with skateboarding. Sublime is kind of all you have on the soundtrack that comes close. There's some good artists on here though, like EJ Cubert, Nas, Bad Religion, even No FX is in this. So it's pretty good. At this point in the game, the story's kind of given up for now. It's turned into, hey, can we get some footage for a skate video we'll use later? Bomb around and find some interesting spots. And we're gonna premiere our video in Vancouver at the Slam City Jam. But we're not just gonna jump down some namby-pamby stairs. We're going on the fucking roof. Well, not yet, because we have to actually get up there. Which you'd think would be kind of easy enough, but climbing in this game's a little awkward, and it's super easy to lose progress. I don't understand why they all just put me on the roof. This game's engine isn't made so I can be Aaron Ralston. We invite Eric up, and instead of kicking him off the building, we allow him to film us. I think at this point our character has a bit of an adrenaline addiction. Not only does he decide he's gonna jump from one building to another, he decides he's gonna do it over a police helicopter. And I'm gonna pull a McTwist on the way over. Are you gonna do it while jerking off too? Hey wait, hey before you go, he should really consider maybe throwing Eric into the helicopter blades. You know one thing that's amazing about this game? How easy it is to restart a mission when you fuck up. Watch this shit. There's no loading or anything, and especially on the later difficulties where there's less room for error, being able to just restart and not have to wait at all to get back into the action is seriously useful. Not now, dude. Shut the fuck up, I'm trying to do a handstand. While it might not be a big deal, I love the characters audibly reacting to you. It once again is a great addition in making the world feel more alive. They only seem to react though whenever I either run into them, or am near them. I wish they could have some reaction to this insane shit I'm doing. And while we're on that subject, I wish my character would fucking react to the sick shit I'm doing. This is one of the few things I thought the Pro Skater remakes got right. The character pumping their fist and being all excited about a big combo is great. In this game, my character reacts like he just got done watching 12 Years a Slave. Oh god, another thing to drive? And it controls differently too? Why put the effort in? These driving sections are already boring and irritating, and with this mower especially, it's incredibly easy to get stuck somewhere. Mainly because the layout of this level wasn't meant for mowing leaves. Let's remember, this game is called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, not Hank Hill's fucking lawnmower. The only good thing about this is that it matches my shirt. 
After getting some more footage for our video we're gonna be showing off here in Vancouver, it's finally time to head out and watch it. Oh god damn, I'm getting tired of these fucking cars, dude. They're not that frequent, but they come in just at the right time to break the game's flow and make me fucking pissed. I don't know why the developers were so proud of this. It doesn't even control like a car. Like, look at this. It's like I'm in a Bruins stadium and I'm on NyQuil. Look, there's no reason to be angry though. Remember that sick rooftop gap I did in Hawaii? It's gonna be premiered here in front of a large audience. We're at the end of the game, and I'm sure the credits are going to be a video of me in my new mansion with my newly installed hair plugs to cover up my gang tattoo so I won't get harassed by hooligans in the street anymore. Did I miss my part? Part? You weren't even in it. What? But Eric's part rule. Oh, fuck no. He did the sickest rooftop gap I've ever seen. Roof to roof in Hawaii. 40 stories up. Oh, you weaselly bitch. What the fuck, Eric? How the fuck did you even manage to accomplish this, Eric? This is you, and this is me. I don't have any of your features, Eric. I understand this is Vancouver, so no one can see that well, but no one's that retarded, Eric. Now, instead of pulling a Tonya Harding and Linguini in his legs so bad that he can't perform, we just fucking push him. Hey, we go way back. So I'm gonna forget you just did now, that. Now, fuck you, Eric. You are my perfect hair plugs fantasy. You're a pro? They entered you as an amateur. Someone made a mistake. This area has the same problems that the other competitions have, where the area is incredibly limited in the tricks I can pull off. It kind of feels like a waste, because as I said earlier, this stage is actually really fun to skate in when there's no restrictions. The audience here is also great. They freak out over like the smallest things. After ruining Eric's asshole again in the competition, we get to be a pro, so our dreams aren't ruined yet. Maybe you could help me shop for a house. Wait a second, dude, are you fucking crazy? I know you want to start the dream right away, but you really shouldn't be trying to buy a house in Vancouver unless you can afford six figures a year. There's no time to be thinking about that, especially when everyone's on their way to Russia, and we have to get to the bus right now! Oh, damn. My shoes. I need my trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we have our jacket. I mean, we won't want to get cold. Russia is fucking irritating. It's way too big for its own good. And if you don't execute stuff just right during the missions here, you lose all your progress. It seriously fucks up my momentum. Rodney Mullen, why are you hanging out here freezing your ass off? Nah, it doesn't get to me. Do what I do. Hop around to get warm. I feel like Rodney Mullen always gets the shaft in these games. You only get to interact with him like twice, and it makes him seem like he's not that important. This dude invented the impossible, and the fucking kickflip. How many people do you know that can do a kickflip? Fucking everyone. It's like the most iconic trick of all time. But instead, the series name goes to the guy who made the eggplant to fakie, and the backside rewind grind. In the very old gay twist. Look, I'm not saying that Tony Hawk isn't a talented guy or impressive or anything like that. When you're first starting out, even putting both your feet on the skateboard is hard and stressful. So anyone that can do stuff like this... ...is really fucking cool. I'm just saying that you have to admit, his name is like 58% of the reason he's famous. Tony Hawk is probably the most recognizable, brandable fucking name in the universe. There's people who literally know nothing about skateboarding, but know who Tony Hawk is. Do you think he would have become this giant celebrity if his name was like Joe Scott? Or like Samuel Reed? After pulling some pranks on these guards, we ring a bell causing some gates to open up a bit more of the level. Bam gets so excited from this that he does his classic Bill Clinton impression. Two suckers open the gates. I love it when a plan comes together. Having the second half of the stage open up after doing a good amount of missions is actually great on these really big stages like New Jersey and Moscow. These stages would be really intimidating at first glance due to their size, so spreading them out makes them a bit more digestible. But even with the areas being divided up at first, Moscow still made me feel lost as fuck as a kid. I can't even imagine how dumb it would have been if the whole stage was opened up from the start. I might have died. Sup, guys. Listen, I've been thinking, we can't keep this up. Remember how I used to torch action figures with you? I acted like a dork, I'm sorry, I got carried away. Look, even though I've ragged on our character here for not busting out Eric's legs or drowning him in a fountain, the game's story actually gives me a reason to tolerate this guy. Mainly the fact we don't want to lose our six sponsors, who right now are probably paying for like everything in our life. Not to mention he's like our biggest competition, so it makes us look a little silly if we curb stomp him on one of our homemade ramps. I understand it's a bit dumb to care about how this game's story works. Normally I wouldn't care that much as it's just a catalyst for doing triple impossibles. But it was one of the game's biggest selling points and additions to the whole series. I talked about how it advances the game world, but how is it as a story? It's alright. I wouldn't necessarily sit down and watch a movie with this plot, but the characters are fun enough. 
And it's only really stupid when it wants to be. Mmm, tanks. Oh, tank. Look at these tanks. Damn, look at these tanks. If you want a good juvenile punk movie, they don't have skating in them, but I'd recommend SLC Punk and The Fall of Civilization. Try to score big points around them while they're broadcasting. I need to get on TV out of my way! Oh, fuck! These kids came here just to see our team rip. Any ideas? Well, you could do some lip tricks and I could air over you. Right on. They'll be stoked on a little doubles show. Eric, no one wants to watch doubles. At this point, Eric's not being such a dick anymore, but he's about to ruin everything by not being able to handle his alcohol. Me and Vladimir here are feeling good tonight. Okay, if we take a test spin. Are you serious? Oh, man. Bam's gonna be so jealous. Dude, stop it. All right, look, we're a pretty ample fellow. Instead of nagging Eric like a chick. Dude, stop it. Why don't we use our upper body strength to maybe forcibly remove him from the vehicle? By not doing this, we are putting other people's lives in danger. Oops. We crashed the tank, and Eric blames it on us. So now we're out of the pro circuit. We end up trapped in Russia, but after doing some more fucking driving around and associating ourselves with terrorists, we managed to get a flight back to the US. With being kicked off the pro circuit and probably losing all our sponsors, we head back to Jersey. It looks like in the time it took us to get back, Eric turned into an evil car cartoon character. He even has enough money to buy a slave. I got it all. My own company, six cars in my garage, a record deal in the works, and what do you got, huh? Food stamps? I don't know how in a 12 hour time frame, Eric managed to completely turn into a greedy piece of shit who's even more arrogant than before. I've got an idea. I want to do it right this time. Show the kids what skating's really about. And now it's our duty to be the most legit and awesome skater of all time and show everyone that Eric is just a big dummy who don't know nothing about skateboarding. And we're gonna do it by making a videotape. We start our own team. I like it. Now let's find some guys who share our same philosophy. We have to get some PR for our new tape, but one of the missions has something a bit strange in it. This is just like a basic mission where I have to get like 200,000 points or whatever. But it starts me off in this weird position where I just bounce off everything at the beginning. Why not just put me over here? I don't get it. Having an awesome tape is cool and all, but it's nothing without a good, memorable name. Alright, done! Peralta also makes sure our tape won't be garbage by giving us some secret spots to skate. This is a great way to end the game. The challenges are actually challenging for once, and it's super cool to play as some pro skaters. You even get to select the areas they get heavily injured in. After finishing the video, you get to see a well-edited montage of all the pros you chose. Jeez, man. I think we broke the pinata with that video. We can't even keep up with orders. With our video going over well, you think the game would be done right here. But it seems Eric still wants to talk, so he pulls up to us in his life-size Hot Wheels car. He offers us a shit ton of money, but we refuse and instead tell him to fuck off. I tell you what, I'll buy you out for half a mil right now. I got my checkbook. I told you, it was never about the money. <laughs> We're through. I've got everything I need. Not this. Remember Hawaii building jump helicopter? That was some sick footage. Too bad no one ever saw it. You backstabbing, mob flipping cock. What do you say? One last now, instead of breaking Eric's jaw and taking our Winner tape back, we tape. have to face off against him in some gay co- Oh shit, he actually did it! Forget the video, or even playing as the pros or any of that shit. Getting to whack Eric in the fucking mouth is the best ending this game could possibly have given me. It's seriously perfect. But the question is if the rest of the game is just as perfect as that ending. Well, it's definitely one of the best in the series, and I think you can even argue it's the best. The whole feel is a lot more relaxed than all the previous games. Pro Skater 4 added the mission structure, and it makes me really happy they decided to stick with it for Underground and all the subsequent games afterwards. It allows for a lot of moments where you just get to relax and skate around exploring the level while looking for some more missions to do. In a time-based arcade style that's in the first three Pro Skater games, it leaves you with no downtime. Once you finish one objective, you merely have to rush over and do a move over something, or collect some stupid letters, or get my VHS copy of Air Bud. And while that's great for speedrunning and general challenge, that's not really what skate is. It's a lot of just moving around and enjoying yourself, and doing a kickflip occasionally if you're really cool. I get the impression from Underground that it wanted to be a little more like that with things like being able to get off your board. It's trying to be a little more like actual skating and less like a video game. And while this desire to make the series more accurate ended up kind of ruining it with games like Tony Hawk's Ride, at this point all the things done to make the game more realistic all have positive effects. Buy this game on eBay. It's only worth $5 and shit. The only thing better to spend $5 on is some snacks from 7-Eleven.